Hello and welcome to How the Race Was Won, a video feature we hope to host here on Cyclocosm.com on a semi-regular basis that examines in flippant detail exactly how a recent European professional cycling race was won. The focus of today's feature actually makes for a fairly poor inaugural show because it's no secret how Saturday's centennial edition of Alon San Remo was won. Columbia High Road put George Hinkapi on the front in the final kilometer and Mark Cavendish's trademark burst of speed nipped an early jumping Heinrich Hauser at the line. What's far more interesting is the story of how the race was lost. In a largely flat MSR course, the final two climbs at the Suppressa and the Poggio tend to inspire a flurry of attacks from riders who don't fancy their chances in a sprint. However, Saturday's race offered almost the complete opposite. Riders who would otherwise focus on daring solo moves went to the front and then farted around like a bunch of cat fours in an FU headwind. Here in the Suppressa, we see Michele Scarponi setting a decent tempo, but each time he turns around looking for help, all he finds is an unwilling Stefano Garzelli doing his best Alfred and Newman impression. No one broke, no one came through, the spinner stayed on, and it was more or less as if the entire climb didn't happen. It was much the same story in the Poggio. As the pack wound around a sweeping bend and sudden kick, there was much head-turning and wheel-marking. Here, Christophe Lamavelle and Sylvain Chavanel pass off the lead as calmly as two men can be expected on a 9% grade at race tempo six and a half hours into a seven-hour long bike race. When the attacks finally came, all two of them, they were ineffectual and easily neutralized. Certified AARP member Davide Remelin made a move so thoroughly marked that it resembled a white anchor being dragged from a sea of multicolored kelp. Hippo Pizzotto, who's proven in the past he is technically new to win this race, made a second jump a mere 30 seconds from the summit, apparently for no other reason than he heard the first rider over the top of the Poggio would be awarded a free perm and die job. Nonsensical riding from teams without major sprint threats didn't help matters. Liquid Gas set a senselessly hard tempo into the Suppressa, while Case de Parn, apparently unsatisfied with the exposure from a recent Pyrenees win, stole camera time leading to the Poggio. The real booby prize, however, goes to Tor Hushov. While the big Norwegian acquitted himself well over the climbs, he seemed flat and listless most of the day. Here you see him losing the wheel to Cavendish in the run to the Poggio, then later to Fabian Wegman with 2k to go, and again, finally to Cavendish at the beginning of the Britain's race-winning sprint. The only other rider with a real chance at victory today was Heinrich Hausler, who might have pulled it off had the idea crossed his mind before the final 100 meters. However, Cavendish's power and chin on the bar's aero posture made short work of the Germans' touch too early attempt. In the end, the win went to Cavendish and the steady work of his Columbia High Road teammates on an emphatic bike throw. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won.